Thank you for attending this last lecture in this second hall. So um, I'm going to present my master's thesis here with the visualization of Bitcoin transactions for forensic and security analysis, because I feel it's simply time for plan B. So I guess everybody of you have somehow heard about Bitcoin in the recent years at least. And one of um, those headlines which pop up in the newsletters quite frequently is, for example, the Bitcoin's booming valuation is helping attract more cyber criminals. And there, two of the main um, things about Bitcoins are already mentioned in one headline. So many people assume, okay, now there has to be some newest height in the value for Bitcoin because we hear it nearly on a daily basis and as well about the criminal actions which are performed with the Bitcoin system, either with ransomware or with money laundering, etc., etc. But now, after reading all of those newspaper articles, we thought about, okay, is it really that anonymous, the system, that you, can, that you can't even have, a tra have any option to trace back this traffic which is happening within the Bitcoin system? So we discovered, yes, there should be somehow a visualization possibility, and therefore we came up with our plan B. So our main motivation was, as there is a huge amount of data already stored within the blockchain, so over 50 gigabytes already, um, we thought, okay, a human being just can't um, see, uh, if you have just textual information, you can't just see the correlation between those transactions. So we think there should be somehow a visual input as well for especially the forensic and security an analysts to discover the complex, complex world of Bitcoin. And to be able to discover it in an optimal way, there should be a somehow of an interactivity uh, within this whole prototype. So now after we discovered what the motivation about this topic um, in our research room is. Um, I'm going to give you a short outlook about the ongoing topics. So first of all, so that we are all on the same page, I'm going to give you a short overview about Bitcoin and the blockchain in general, so you know even which information you're going to see afterwards in this prototype. And last but not least, there will be, of course, the prototype itself and some further actions we are going to be um, working on in the future. So first of all, Bitcoin was first mentioned in a um, paper produced by the group or the individual under the pseudonym of Satoshi Nakamoto in 2008. And shortly afterwards, just half a year later or a couple of months later, in the early of 2009, even the first transaction, so the first block was created there. And afterward, it slowly began to cover some interest and as you can see here in this figure down on my slide, um, it's the value of Bitcoin skyrocket this year. So at the beginning we had a value of about $1,000 per Bitcoin and now it's going up until 7000 even. So in general, Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency as already told. And many uh, people think it is anonymous as already discovered beforehand. But in general, it's just pseudo-anonymous, and it has no intrinsic, intrinsic value on its own, as it is, the value is discovered um, depending how many users there are currently and how much is the demand of it. And it has also no physical form, so it's a digital currency. And one of the most motivation factors why people are using it is it because there is no central unit controlling everything, so it is just a decentralized crypto system. So just to give, give you a short overview how the blockchain even works. So first of all, there has to be someone who wants to transfer the cryptocurrency. So here on the, okay, with the first mark here, you see there is somehow a transaction wanted. And then this request is given to the peer-to-peer -peer network, which is displayed here on my slide with those small little computers. And they afterwards have to verify this transaction and after it is uh, verified, the transactions are then combined to a certain block. And those transactions can be, I have, so one block consists at least of one transaction, but also can have several uh, included into one. And after this block is created, it is afterwards changed to the all chained 
to the already existing blocks, so it creates the so-called blockchain. And as soon as the block is added, um, the transaction is completed, and then the man money, or the currency in this case, is transferred. So to have a closer look at one block itself, it consists of two main parts, let's say. Um, first of all, there is the header part, and second of all, there will be, uh, or there are the, all the transactions displayed, which, is, which are combined to this one block. And the header consists of the header of the previous block, so there is a certain order which can't be manipulated anymore, as well as the Merkle root. And the Merkle root is also very um, interesting because it is uh, done by just hashing all the transactions which are um, combined in this, one in this one block. And they're just paired and hashed again and paired and hashed again. And this one is then afterwards grouped together as the so-called Merkle root. Please remember this because afterwards in the prototype, you're going to see this one as well. So now to have a closer look at the transactions itself, as I already told you, each block has at least one transaction in it. This one transaction could be either the mining reward of just creating one block or several transactions performed during this period of time. And the approximate time for creating one block should be around 10 minutes. So here you can say, uh, you can see on the transaction zero, it started with 100K of Satoshis or Bitcoins, and this is performed as an input. And you have to remember there's always, if the transaction has a certain amount of input, when it is performing an output, everything has to be um, used as an output. So as you can see here, 100K is an input for transaction zero, and afterwards the output is on 140K and on the other output 50K. So you might wonder, okay, where are the 10 missing Ks then? Yeah, of course, there is also a transaction fee. So quite obvious, you can also see it with the transaction one and two, there's always 10 K missing because this is, in our example case, the transition fee, uh, transaction fee, sorry. So now, why is our prototype different from already existing um, real-time rendering programs about the blockchain or discovering of short parts. Well, our prototype is going to be open source because we want to make it as a basis, basic tool to um, get insight into the blockchain, but as it is work in progress, we, we don't have it already online, the whole code, but it's going to be online soon. Um, second of all, our prototype enables the user to use the whole available data which is stored currently in the blockchain and is also, is also updating frequently. So the user has the whole access of the whole blockchain. Further on, we focus on a time-based view because we think if you have the time correlation here, um, you're more, or more likely to find certain specific patterns or, um, for example, we focus afterwards also on mixing services. Um, last but not least, we have somehow of a cash flow analysis and we provide the user multiple views to get a better insight into this complex world. So now, hopefully, you're ready to discover plan B, but first of all about the backend. So we, pro uh, we coded our backend with Python and Neo4g, which is a graph-based database, so we're able to um, request certain things in real time, so to provide the interactivity with our prototype. So now, ta-da, on the prototype, uh, our prototype. So we have <laughs> uh, three different main, or four different main win windows. So the huge one on the left-hand side is the overview window, uh, overview view. Afterwards, there is the detail view on the right hand side of it and below it there will be provided some textual information because not everything can be displayed. For example, a hash value, how should you display it? The human is not able to visualize just small amounts of differences in colors, so some textual information is necessary, we discovered. And on the down hand side here, this longer white thing right now, um, there are the numbers of transactions per day or per week, depending what the user is going to select, is going to display. So now, what would a user do? First of all, there would be some kind of 
um, requests to the user, okay, within a certain period of time, something happened. So just have a look at it. So the user is then going to select a certain period of time. Afterwards, select in which granularity he wants to be, uh, he wants to visualize the data. In our case, it was days. And afterwards, he just clicks on show. So, ta-da, we've got a graph here. So maybe now you think, okay, hmm, it's kind of big, you don't have a good insight here, but it shows on the big overview here, you can discover the whole thing. So you see, for example, there are those dotted uh, red and green cycles, for example, which looks kind of suspicious for the user. And just to have a look um, on the downhand side, there you see the number of transactions performed per day in a light chart. So now, after you've seen, okay, hmm, there could be something, just mark it, and then it's going to be displayed in the detail view. So here, just for an explanation, uh, the green parts are the transactions and the uh, red parts are the um, addresses which were um, used within the transaction. So you can see here that there have been for this one transaction, there had been many addresses included. So it's a very suspicious action here. Why is it? You just have to have a, a click or just hover over the, the green dot, for example, and then you get the ID as well as in which hash block it is, uh, the previous block, as well as we first already discovered, the Merkle root, which weight and size, etc. So the user gets all the information he wants to know about it. So not all the, the information is displayed currently, but you can scroll down on it. And now the user probably also wants to see some time-based correlation here. So we have a second view for the user provided with a so-called parallel coordinate time-based graph. So as each block consists of several um, elements, let's say, so for example, the size, which amount of value was transferred, what was the transaction fee, etc. So one view, so the front view, for example, um, shows one block, and each vertical line displays one of those properties the block has itself. And now for each block, there are several transactions inside. So you see the transaction which were um, grouped together in this one block. And then with the possibility to move this backwards, you can see if for one property in a time-based view, what happened with those um, values inside it over the time. So, now, as we've discovered the prototype itself, um, our further actions are going to be, we want to fix, uh, not fix, to further program our approach to also make some directed graphs included as well as further um, displaying methods for the parallel coordinate graph and to also get some expert feedback to make it more usable. Afterwards, we're going to have some statistical analysis as well as pattern recognition, uh, pattern detection. So we can detect certain mixing services because as we already all know, uh, mixing services are here for masking the identity and we somehow want to de-anonymize de um, the different users. And last but not least, we figured out that machine learning would really help the users to either automatically or semi-automatically detect all those mixing services or certain other patterns. So now I'm nearly at the end of my presentation. I just want you to remember that the Bitcoin, although it may, may seem an anonymous way to transfer uh, data, it is not. So there is the possibility to trace back all the data but with our system, we don't want to see the actual person, so we're not giving the ID or the IP of the person back, but just the Bitcoin addresses, and give the users, in our case, the forensic and security um, experts, the chance to just have a look in this complex world of Bitcoin. So now, thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions,